Thank you, Richard. It's wonderful to be here. I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank the, the Rise team for inviting me to this awesome event. It's my second time here. Uh, second time. I was here last year, my first event uh, this time around. <clears throat> Joseph here was speaking earlier as, as Roman did. Yep, so yep. Um, they're, uh, they're not newbies at all. So welcome to the great privacy debate. So this is the first time I've ever moderated a debate, a formal debate. So uh, before I go into my introduction, let me just talk about the format we have today. So we're, you've heard the, the topic, is technology worth, excuse me, is the benefits of technology worth giving up your privacy for? Wow, what a hot, hot topic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have one side present for five minutes, and then we'll have the other side give the alternative view and then we'll have time for a, a, a quick rebuttal from each side. Um, I'll add some comments and then we'll have final conclusions at the very end. We've got 23 minutes, I'm told, or actually 21 now that I've been talking. And so uh, privacy, obviously hot. Um, I, I googled privacy last night and uh, the results are, I think you all know, it, it's, it's, it's not so good. It's, it's really uh, in terms of the, the news about privacy is never, never good. So uh, I think that I just want to talk about two quick things before I hand it over to our esteemed debaters. And that is, I think everyone in this tech event knows that you, the consumer, is now the product. You know, as long as you understand that, I think that's the main step that we need to, to take. But for, for decades, we've moved into this direction very slowly. Some of you may recall a thing called a phone book. And your name would be in it, your address would be in it. And in order not to be in that phone book, if you wanted to be anonymous, you'd actually have to pay not to be included in that. So I think we've started to see some implications of that in, in this environment. So increasingly companies want our data, our personal information, so they can personalize things, which is generally a good thing. So my final anecdote before I hand things over is I was in Shanghai a month ago at the CES Asia conference and the CTO of JD.com, JD.com is China's second largest e-tailer, uh, e-commerce company, said that his plan, the company's plan is to, to follow households from the time a baby, diapers are bought for the baby. They're going to follow that household for 18 years. Now he was smiling, he thought that was an awesome thing, but myself and a few others in the room, we thought that is a bit freaky. So on that note, I want to hand things over to, to Joseph, who is going to take us on one side of the privacy debate. Very well. Thank you, Joseph. Um, I like the title of the panel. Uh, it is uh, controversial, it is thought-provoking, and it's completely wrong. <laughs> Think of it. It suggests that if you give away your privacy, you'll get more or better technology. That is not true, not true at all. We're giving away our privacy not because we're getting better or more technology. We're giving away our privacy simply because we cannot protect it. We cannot protect our sensitive data. So I want to make a few points. Number one, we cannot protect data. Number two, there is no need to protect all data. And then I want to show you, I'll try to show you an ideal way to protect what is possible. So let us start with the first point. We cannot protect all data that we have. We accumulate enormous amount of data. And by the way, technology is the source of this data. Think of the amount of data generated by our personal devices, our laptops, iPhones, iPads. Think of the amount of data generated by our governments and bureaucracies and our business, our enterprises. We simply generate way too much information and the growth is exponential. And technologies that we're using 
are not good enough to protect sensitive data. Think of encryption. Everybody speaks of encryption, but encryption, well, yes, you encrypt data, but then when you have to use it in applications or just in human use, you cannot use encrypted data. You have to decrypt it, and then hackers steal your data. Uh, you look at other technologies such as data masking. Good technology, enormously expensive, enormously complex, and it's irreversible. You mask data, you cannot return back to original data. Think of DLP, data loss prevention technology. Very popular one. It's a nightmare to manage it. My point is that there's a huge amount of data growing exponentially. Technologies that we use are not good enough to protect the data. And then there's a thing. We are not in control of all data that define us as individuals or enterprises. Our, as individuals, we have very little control of our privacy, of our private data. You can think of enterprises or government have control of all data. That is not true. Think of amount of data outside of their control, of data owned by open source communities, or data opened by your social networking, or professional networking. And then, at the very end, there are hackers. There are hackers' communities that have data that outside of your control. So even if you try to protect all data with technology that exists, there is a great amount of data that you cannot protect. And now we have to decide what we're going to do. And I am going to offer you an ideal way to protect sensitive data, to protect your privacy. Maybe guess. An ideal way to protect your sensitive data is? Any guesses? An ideal way to protect sensitive data is not to have <laughs> sensitive data. I'm not joking. That is the only way not to have sensitive data. At least minimize the amount of data that you believe is personal. And my prediction is that within the next three years, no longer, by 2020, a great number of governments and enterprises will realize that they cannot protect up to 75% of data they today believe is personal or sensitive and they declassify this data into open use, into everybody's use, or in some broad use, and will focus on protecting only 25% of the data. This is the only way to deal with. So, there's way too much data. Technologies are poor that can protect them. Great deal of data is outside of control, but think of it. There is no need to protect all sensitive data because we share data anyway. Think of all these communities and that we are part of, uh, all these uh, social communities, all these communities such as um, Facebook or other national organizations similar to Facebook. People share information with each other and they share it more and more. So there is no need to protect great deal of the sensitive data. That's why governments and enterprises will declassify up to 75% of data over the next three, five, seven years, and will focus on protecting only part of it. Thank you, Joseph. Your turn, Roman. I don't want my data to be declassified, not my credit cards, not my, you know, my kids' photos and so on. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, so first of all, I, I agree that this is a very good debate, but it's also wrong because this is not about the trade-off between, uh, you know, the privacy and technological advantages and so on. This is this is normal business. This is you know privacy and convenience. This companies like Facebook and so on don't know how to make money if we don't give them uh, more and more private data. That's their business. You know, in a, in a sense, you know, I, don't ha I have no illusions about the fact that people will give up more and more data in exchange for convenience. And from that perspective, Facebook is no different from Coca-Cola. We all know that sugar is bad, but everyone drinks Coke and everyone drinks co uh, soda because it tastes so good. <laughs> so, so, yes, you know that you should not be giving up this data and that data but Facebook is make, enforcing you to give it up 
and make those trade off every single day. You know, you don't want to sign up with your cell, cell phone number, it's a little less convenient. You give them your cell phone number, it's more convenient, but they will use that number to find someone who's in your network. And every day, it gets bigger and bigger. And again, I have no illusions that that's the business and I cannot stop it, but at least we should be all aware of the fact that that's what's happening. It, again, it's the same as sugar. We all drink sugar, but everyone should know that it's not good for you and it's not good for your health. It's the same with it privacy. You know, it's their business model. They will always force us to give more, but at least we should actually, I hope one day people read the fine print and understand what will be done with the data. I have two examples for you before I hand it over. One is, in, in London, they did a, in UK, they did an experiment. They, gave access to Wi-Fi and the, the, the terms of use specify that you have to give them your oldest son. <laughs> people did it. No one read it. You know, people <laughs> were giving the oldest siblings, the oldest sons, you know, kids to the, to the company for access to Wi-Fi. Is it excessive? Maybe. Did it happen? Yes. <laughs> and the second thing is I used a system that helped me to clean my uh, my inbox, I gave the company as a startup uh, to clean my private inbox. What turned out is that every time I got email from Lyft, they called and they, they actually let Uber know so that Uber would know how many times I actually used Lyft. Was it in the terms of use? Yes. Did I agree to it? Yes. Uh, am I using that company? Not anymore. But you can deal like that with small company. I would not be able to stop using Facebook and I understand that we make this distinction, that, that decision between, you know, privacy and convenience every day. But let's not call it access to technology. Let's call it a business model. All right. Thank you, Roman. Back to you, Joseph. Your, your uh, rebuttal. Um, I believe there is a pretty much uh, similarity. Yeah, I, I, think, say, we, I, I think we sort of we both <laughs> agree yeah. that privacy will be given away. What I'm trying to say that there, of course, there are two drivers. Number one is that you, it's not a deliberate choice. It's not that you are giving it away to get something a few dollars back. No. The first thing you already know, at least most of us know, that we have no control over our privacy. It will be taken away from us anyway. So it makes sense sometimes giving away even more freely that sensitive data, making a few dollars on that. Um, but see, the society is changing. It's really becoming uh, the world without walls, or I would call it sometimes world without shame. We stop being ashamed of many things, and we share a great deal of very personal, intimate information we never shared just a few years ago. For example, you can easily find information about people's sexuality, sexual orientation, they share it nowadays openly. Or about child adoption, it was a prohibited topic. People never want to tell someone, never know that they adopted a child. Or people share information of their drug abusers or alcohol abusers. They share information of their diseases, even terminal diseases. They're trying to get something back, and that back is actually not a monitoring issue. They're trying to get support from people they share information with. I am sick, I am drug abuser, I want to get an advice, a help from someone else. So the thing that I would suggest here to do is to realize that we simply cannot protect our sensitive data, that there is only way to protect sensitive data is not to have them, at least to have the absolute minimal necessity of sensitive data, only that minimum you'll be able to protect. So the best important thing is deploy, first of all, not even protection technologies, but data discovery technologies. So you would go across your company, find all possible sensitive data, classify them with a preparation to declassify the vast majority of sensitive data and focus on protecting a small percent of it. Okay. And when you give it away into public access, a great benefit will come to society. First of all, if government gives away the sensitive data, we start trusting government more because as citizens, we're getting more and more control over government decisions because we have all data about government. We will 
able to use this data to program some application, very useful one, and that will spark people's creativity when they get access to this sensitive data. Thank you. Yeah, and, and this, is, this is where we actually disagree. You know, I don't believe that you should, any one of us should give more data available freely. I do believe that, again, it's like more sugar. It tastes good, but it's not good for you. I'm not going to stop Coca-Cola, but I would less, if I achieve one thing is that all of us one day will read a little bit of fine print or we will actually ask why do they need this data. There's a reason why, you know, uh, uh, Zuckerberg has a sticker on his note, notebook uh, camera. He knows that there are risks in, in sharing and oversharing. So that's, that's all I'm trying to do today is that don't, don't view it as, as sharing is give, give you access in technology. It's a part, a part of the deal and we are not getting the best deal out of it. Okay. All right. Thank you both of you. So yeah, I think we sort of converged in the middle, but we have one area of, of good uh, confrontation, if you will. And, and that's on the, it, Joseph's point is that we can't protect data, 75% of it can't be protected, so let's focus on that really, really, really important sensitive part, whereas Romans is more talking about your photos, that's not really not considered that sensitive, but for a family, you know, it can yeah. be uh, very harmful yeah. if, if in the wrong, in the and, wrong and hands. someone will make money on it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so I came into this um, debate feeling pretty insecure about privacy. And after 20 minutes of discussion, I feel, especially after Joseph's contribution, <laughs> I feel increasingly <laughs> depressed that and we, we can't protect the, our sensitive <laughs> data. Uh, it's only going to be used to make money for us. So I, I knew that. But the other one is this... Uh, this, the, a world without walls, I can handle that, but I'm not sure about this world without shame. So, uh, okay, so each of you have one minute just to make any final notes, uh, and then we're gonna take a vote, which I should have taken in the beginning, but I forgot, and then I'll turn it over to, to Roman to give his point. We are unable to protect our sensitive data. The only way to protect sensitive data is not to have them. So. Search through your data, find data that can be declassified, be prepared, the majority of data will be declassified, and stay with protecting just a small amount of it. As of the comment, uh, like Roman, I'm a father of a daughter, and I understand that Roman doesn't want his daughter or son picture to be, dis to be exhibited somewhere, but has he asked his daughter or son, maybe they already posted their photos on Facebook. That's what's happening. That is my point, that we as individuals are not in control of data. Our children are in more control. Our companies are not in control. Who is in control? Tiny, it's our own control. A little bit more enterprises. The rest in the hands of open source communities, professionals communities, social communities, and hackers, of course. They own enormous amount of information. And don't think that they don't use mathematics. They do inferences. They can, they can use a few numbers and made up and extrapolate the third one. So if you don't think that you, if you think that you can hide your salary, for example, that's funny because through your position, your location, few other factors, they can figure out the range of your salary down to few dollars. Okay. So it really doesn't make sense to protect a great deal of sensitive data. Good. We right. won't be able to do right. it anyway. Final comment? Uh, final, again, I refuse to live in a world where I have to give up my data because no one can protect it. I don't believe that that's right and I will fight and protect my data. I'm telling you, uh, it's, it's a deal. It's a business deal. It's like Coca-Cola. You give up your privacy and someone makes money. Okay, <laughs> great. So I just want to have a quick show of hands. On the, on the pro side, uh, you, the benefits of technology are worth giving up your privacy for. Who would say yes? Just a few, a handful. And so on the, the other side, a lot more, a lot more, overwhelming majority. All right, well, uh, we ran over a little bit, but uh, we tried to speed things up as fast as we could. Interesting topic. I want you, the audience, to give me a, give our two esteemed uh, debaters a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.